So I was just working on something kind of cool here and thought I'd make a quick video about it. And I think this is probably just something to keep in your toolbox, could come in handy someday if you ever have to do something similar. But basically I've got this board coming out here and I'll make a separate video on the board, but I want to ship this board with a micro SD card that's pre-flashed with some test files. So at first, you know, I was thinking I'll take all 100 of these micro SD cards, plug them into my computer and drag and drop the files over. But then I was thinking, you know, the couple prototypes I've got here, I could just use the boards to do this. And this is based on the ESP32, and that's what this video is going to be about, is how I was able to do this, because it was actually really cool. I was able to flash all 100 of these micro SD cards in like 10 minutes, just boom, 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 all automated, very quick. And the board here is based on an ESP32, and there's nothing really special. We'll go over the hardware in a second. My first prototype here was just, you know, using a cheap little uh, Node MCU board with an SD card breakout. So nothing fancy going on there. We'll pull up the schematic for this board and I'll show you all of the connections. But let me give you a quick demo. Of, so let's pop the micro SD card in, hit the reset button, and then away it goes. And there you go. Once it's finished, you see the green LED is flashing. It wrote four files to the SD card. We can pop that out, put the next card in, hit the red button, and it does it again and again and again. So like I said, I had all of my prototype boards here out on the bench, so I was able to just quickly just, bam, go through all 100 of those micro SD cards and preload them with these four test files. Now we've got the serial monitor window up here, and just so you can kind of see what it was doing, the first thing it does is it loads the card up, it checks its size, it looks for any existing files on the card and just deletes them. So it clears the SD card out first and then it goes through and writes the four files. Now what's really cool about this project is that these four files are pre-flashed into the ESP32. So it's copying them over from the internal flash on the ESP32 to the micro SD card. And at the end of this video, I'll kind of ramble on about ways we can improve on this project and maybe some other cool features we could add to it. Uh, but for now, that's what this is doing, just straight from spy flash memory to the micro SD card. So let's get into it. I'll show you how this whole thing works. So I've got the code up here on GitHub, so you can pull that down, runs right on an ESP32. The connections for the micro SD card to the ESP32, you can go over to the documentation for the ESP programmer board down to the source and here's a schematic for that. So, you know, if you're using your own ESP32 board and a, you know, micro SD card holder or, you know, a board with it built in, you know, you can see these connections here and you might have to actually make uh, changes to that, but I'll show you that in the code how you do that. So if we jump back to the code here, the first thing I want to talk about is how to get those files onto the ESP32. So we're using a plugin here called, uh, let's go, we go to tools here and you see ESP32 sketch data upload. So this is how you put files over into the spy flash memory. And I've got a link to that right here. So let's go there. So we download the zip file from the releases page and we'll go over to the Arduino directory. So in your Arduino sketches folder, uh, you'll go into a tools folder so you'll have to create that if it doesn't already exist. And that's where you will unzip that plugin. So here you see ESP32FS, the tool folder, and then the actual plugin itself. So that's the way I have it set up. You obviously will then close your Arduino IDE, relaunch it, and then you should now see here under tools, ESP32 sketch data upload. Now this is kind of cool actually, because you can then go to your sketch folder here and you'll see, you'll have to create this. You'll have a data folder. And then these are the four files that I'm going to burn to spy flash memory on the ESP32. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you how that works. Close the serial monitor because you know it's going to need to access the serial port. Sketch data upload, and there it goes. So this is actually separate from the actual program that you would normally upload to it. This is in a separate partition of memory on the ESP32. Now that plugin uses the spy flash file system format in the, uh, the partition scheme. You can do this also if you uh, configure it for a fat file system, but I don't have that set up. And as you can see here, we can only load up to three megabytes worth of, of files. 
So that's kind of a problem. But if you can get the FAT file system working, you can see you can do up to what we got here, 12.5 megabytes. So that would be a lot better. But for my application here, I only need to load like two megabytes. So that's fine. And then let's just upload that code now that we've loaded those files over and we'll give it a test. Okay, and now we're looking back at the monitor here and we can see that it is working. It's loading those files out of SpyFlash and burning them to the micro SD card. All right, let's jump into this code real quick, which uh, is actually pretty simple. It's just two examples right out of the ESP32 core combined. One for reading files out of SpyFlash and the other one for writing files to the SD card. So pretty simple stuff, but I did want to point one thing out, which is for the spy communication to the SD card, I always use vSpy. And the reason for that is because those pins here, you'll see I've got them commented here, versus HSpy, which I think is the default, uh, the vSpy pins don't use GPIO 12 for the MISO pin, which is important, or can be important, because if we go here, I always use this as a reference here, if pin 12 is high, the boot, it, the ESP32 won't boot. So that can be kind of a problematic thing if you know you're booting up and you, the SD card's doing something you don't want it to do or your chip select line's not quite right. It's just something that I've seen go, go wrong in a couple designs. So I tend to not use GPIO 12 if I can help it. So anyway, that's why we're using the vSpy uh, uh, connection there. So if we go down to setup here, there's again, nothing special going on here, but in the init SD card, we can go over to that tab and you'll see here how we initialize the card. And this card, this whole, all of this code really is just for automating flashing the SD card. So if anything goes wrong along the way, I want to jump into a while one loop and drive the red LED pin high. So it just, you know, keeps the red LED on and I can see something went wrong. Now this code only runs in setup and then that's it. So when I put a new card in, I just reboot it and it just starts over. So once we've got the SD card initialized there, I do print out what kind of card it is and the memory on the card. And then I go and clear the files that are on there just in case, you know, it took me a few tries or something got corrupted along the way. Uh, we go up here to this function, clear SD card. And all of this does is just go and find any files that exist on the card. Keep track of what that file name is here. So we've got entry is whatever the file we open and then go and delete it. So sd.remove that entry.name and then close out and move on to the next file. Now this was kind of an afterthought, but uh, now that I look at it, I'm not sure if it'll actually delete folders, like if you have multiple directories and things, because it only opens up the root and deletes any file that's there. It might do that though. I should test that out. So that's something I'll put in my to-do list. All right, so we're done initializing the SD card. Now we can copy files from the spy flash internal to the ESP32 over to the SD card. And that is all done with this function here, which looks exactly the way we actually clear the SD card files. In fact, all the handling of the SD card is very similar to the way you handle the memory on SpyFlash. So we're actually using the same example where we're looping through to see what files exist, except over here when we find a file, we're going to open it and copy it over to the SD card. So I'm gonna skip down here to that because I think this came straight out of that example for listing the directory on SpyFlash. So right here, we find a file, we open up that same, we open up a file with that same name on the SD card you see here. So file, new SD file. And then the file from SpyFlash right here is what we use to then write it. So here, this is very similar to what you might have done with uh, you know, your other SD card examples where you need to print all, all of the data, you know, like an SD, a, a CSV file or something, for example. So while that file is open, just write every byte over to the new SD file that you just created on the SD card. So it's as simple as that. All we're doing is looping through the spy flash memory. In this case, we have four files. Let's look at that actually over here. So yeah, simple as that. All we're doing is looping through the directory on SpyFlash, and as we find a new file, we open it on SpyFlash, then we create a new file on the SD card with that same name, 
And then while reading it out, see while dot available, we're reading it out byte by byte right here and writing those bytes over to the SD card. I was kind of surprised how well this worked actually. And again, I was able to flash a hundred cards with this technique in like 10, 15 minutes with you know a couple of my boards going on. Now it's not that fast, okay? This is single byte or I'm single bit uh, communication to the SD card versus, you know, full, you know, four bit MMC interface, which I think you can also do with the ESP32. But in this case, it worked out fine for me and it was fast enough. Uh, but that's how this works. Single byte in, single byte out. And if anything should go wrong, we go into a while one loop writing the red LED high. So if we can't open the file on the spy flash or the SD card, go into that loop and then throw up the error so we know what happened. Then once we're done with that, go ahead and flash the green LED. So that's just a kind of a cool thing I thought I would share with you um, and worked out so well, you know, this could come in handy and, and maybe this could inspire some other ideas, you know, because we've got the ESP32 on there, you could almost use this, you know, as a file browser kind of thing, you know, over an access point connection so you can wirelessly update your files on the memory. You know, you can do all kinds of cool stuff like that. But anyway, again, maybe something just to keep in your toolbox, like I said, could come in handy someday if you ever have to do something similar. Now, it's got a couple downsides. It's not the fastest thing in the world. It's not, um, you can't store huge gigs worth of files on the ESP32. You know, maybe... Um, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, but it would be also kind of cool to see if you could make a some kind of SD card cloning device with the ESP32. I don't know, just thinking out loud there. But anyway, just something quick I thought I'd share with you. Thanks for watching.